Okay, guys. Lesson 7-2. We are continuing to work with exponential graphs. What you guys were doing yesterday was more, uh, you know, when we graphed my class, not quite that dark. We were doing more of the XY chart and, you know, just graphing what there is. Today we are specifically looking at all of our transformations. These are transformations we've been seeing all school year long since, I don't know, maybe chapter two or three, somewhere back in there. So, um, based on the idea, given the parent function, and you'll notice what it says here, y equals b to the x. So, when we talk y equals b to the x, that b is a number. So, it's some number raised to the x. If there's an a value out front, what do you guys remember? What happens when we multiply a function by a number? Oh, you're talking about, uh, you're talking about like a negative and something? Okay, it could be a negative. Okay, if we multiply by a negative, it's going to reflect it. And what if it's just like a plain old number? Stretch or shrink, right? Yeah. So if the a value is negative or if there's a negative out front, a negative means we're going to reflect across the x-axis. Now, there where it says a greater than 0 and a less than 0, those zeros should really be 1s. That's a typo. It doesn't make sense if we talk 0 here. And the idea here is if the value of a, so when we talk absolute value of a, in other words, ignoring the sign, if a is bigger than 1, that means that it is a stretch. If the value of a is less than 1, so again, ignoring the sign, so if it's between 0 and 1, that means it is a shrink. So those are the numbers we're going to work with there. Um, if notice here, a times b and then it's x plus or minus h. If that number is added or subtracted in the exponent, so that means it's with the x. Do you remember what we've talked about in the past? If it's with the x, then that means it's going to be left or right, opposite the sign. Okay, in the past we've talked about it being under the square root. We've talked about it being in the absolute value, just where, whatever the case. So that means it's either going to be left or right, opposite the sign. So if it's a plus h, we're going left h. If it's a minus h, we're going right h. And then if the number is added or subtracted away from the x, so just at the end, then that means we're going up or down with the sign. Sound familiar? This is all review. This is all stuff we've been doing. So if it's plus k, you're going up k. If it's minus k, you're going down k. Okay, so we are going to, of the graphs we're going to look at, we are looking at graph A. So start looking at A and start thinking about what are the pieces that you see happening. What are the transformations you can identify on A? Okay, it's going to shrink. Why is it going to shrink? Okay, we have this number one-third right here. And that number one-third means there's a shrink because it's multiplying by a number less than one. What else? Okay, there's a negative out there, yes? And that negative means we're going to reflect. That 3 to the x is just our base, okay? That is our base function. It might be 3 to the x in one problem, 2 to the x in another problem, 5 to the x in another problem, but that's our base function. So before I actually do this problem, I am going to write down here at the bottom what my transformations are, and there were two of them. We reflected across the x-axis and a vertical shrink, or in other words, a shrink by a factor of one-third. You know, homework will be math Excel. And so it's not that you'll be writing these things out in Math Excel, other than it'll be more of a multiple choice pick. So being able to identify the different pieces. Of course, when you do it for me, I want you to be able to write it out. Now, 
if it's moving up and down, moving left and right, my idea is, okay, we get some basic x, y numbers, and then we take those points and we move them. Here, we have a shrink and we have a reflection, okay? First of all, we don't, we're going to have to come up with some basic numbers to begin with, but then because it's a shrink and a reflection, I'm just going to have us do a straight out xy chart, okay? I'll treat it differently when there's some left, right, or up or down movement, but if it's just shrinking, stretching, reflecting, we're going to set up an xy chart. What are good values to use in an xy chart? Zero, one, two, three if you want, negative one, negative two, okay? You can go as far as the threes if you want. I'm going to use negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. You definitely want some positives and negatives in there, and zero is always, well, 99.9% .9 of the time I love zero. It's rare that I don't like zero in a problem. So, shall we just jump right into the negatives there? On the first one, negative one-third times three to the negative two. How do I deal with that negative exponent other than putting it in the calculator? The magic, the bar thing. I agree. I'm with them. Are you guys with them? Negative exponent says you flip it, right? So that's going to become in the, it's going to go to the denominator. So it's still going to be negative one third, but it's going to be one over three squared. One is three squared. Nine. So I have negative one over three times one over nine. What's that multiply to be? Check your math. Yeah. Negative 127. <laughs> 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So negative 127. Yes, there is a decimal equivalency to that. I don't know what it is right now. I don't really care what it is. I'm going fractions. Okay. Try negative one. Negative one third times three to the negative one. I don't remember. How do we deal with three to the negative one? Goes to the denominator, so it's still negative one third, and it becomes. 1 over 3 to the first, so negative 1 third times 1 over 3 is going to be negative 1 ninth. Okay, I used a little bit of workspace there for my negatives. Can we do 0 with our head? Yes. 3 to the 0. Anything raised to zero is one. Negative one third times one. Negative one third. Negative one third. When you multiply by one, you get what you start with. Okay, let's put in one. Three to the first is three. Now it's negative one third times three. What is a third of three? A third of three, uh, three, 33 point. No, a third of three is one. You're taking three and dividing it by three. A negative times a positive makes it. Negative one. Oh. Okay, let's put in two. Three squared is nine. A third of nine, three. So in other words, nine divided by three. And then negative times a positive makes it. Negative 3. Okay. Now, in this case, we just plugged values into the whole equation. So this is taking care of our reflection and our shrink all at once. I apologize for the graphs. 
they're horrible. I know. Yeah, what? Yeah. It's, I, like, it's like it's realize three, three, and just, I have to deal with it too, okay? I have to deal with it too. We're just going to deal with the horrible graphs. Realize I'm not going to give you these horrible grids on a worksheet or a test. Okay? That's the best negative compromise two, I can offer. Two. So, <laughs> negative 2, negative 127. It means I'm going left 2, down a 27. So, I can't even do it on this graph, honestly. We're just going to go. Negative one, negative one ninth. So I'm going to go left one and down a ninth. Technically, it's down a little bit farther than the last dot, but you can't really tell. Just trying to guess. Yep. Okay. Zero, negative a third. Left, right, zero, and down a third. It's multiple choice. It's multiple choice. Yeah. One, negative one. Right one, down one. At least you get to go a whole box there. Two, negative three. Right two, they're, they're down a three. Okay. Now, can you see your graph forming here? Okay. Keep in mind, what are our graphs were normally what? Running along the x-axis and going up. What happened to this one? It's running along the x-axis on the bottom side and then going down, because my graph that we've been graphing the other day reflected across the x-axis, right? So it's now upside down. So now we're running along the x-axis here on the left, but on the underneath side, and we're going down to infinity instead of us to infinity. So the reflection is that now I'm upside down. The shrink is that my graph is slower to go away from the x-axis. You have a similar looking graph-ish, kind of, close enough? I know. I, again, the best I can do is say, I apologize. Just realize you won't have to use them again. If we are good with A, B is very much like A. So I am skipping B, because as I said, we could do all these graphs, but it would take us a lot longer than necessary. So we're going to go down to graph C. Oh, no, that's different. It's like A to E. Okay, so C. Oh, that's y equals 2 to the x minus 4. Before we start this, what can you identify in terms of transformations? <laughs> right for? Do we agree? How do we know it's right for? Okay, it's minus 4, and that minus 4 is with the x, right? So that tells me left or right, opposite the sign. So... Overall, I'm going to put that this um, translates right for. Okay, so overall, that's what's happening. Now, on this one, I have to treat this one differently than last time. If we just take negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, plug them into this equation as is, and then graph those dots, we're not going to get a very accurate picture of what's happening. What? Well, what? if you plug it in the whole thing as is, 2 to the x minus 4, it's not going to work out very well. You'd have to really use number. You'd have to pick x values that are right for. You'd have to change what x values you're using. Okay? So it's doable. Um, however, what I prefer to do, and there's not just, there's not, there's not wrong and right ways. There's good ways and there's not so good ways. So what I would suggest is take my base function of y equals 2 to the x, get those x, y values, and then after we get those x, y values, take those x values and move them right for. Does that make sense? 
So that's my suggestion. Again, not the only way to do it, is we're going to take y, y equals 2 to the x and move that right 4. And I can kind of talk about once we get this graph, if you just put negative 2 through 2 into this problem as is, the issue you'll run into. But for right now, the way I'm doing it, yes. Okay, so this question was, can we still use the same numbers? Because of what I'm doing, yes. So we're still going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Now realize, what am I plugging these into? Just 2 to the x. Forget the minus 4 for right now. So if we're plugging these into 2 to the x, okay, 2 to the negative 2. Two, two raised to the power of negative two. Okay, so the negative exponent takes it across the denominator, so it's one over two squared, which is one over four. So one fourth. Two to the negative first becomes one over two to the first, which is one half. Yeah, the negative exponent disappears when you flip it across the fraction bar. 2 to the 0 was what? Anything raised to 0 is 1. 2 to the 1st? <laughs> 2. And 2 to the 2nd? 4. Okay, so we got these x, y values. What am I going to do with them? <clears throat> We're going to graph these, and then after you get these graphs, move, right move right four. Thank you. So, negative two, one fourth. I'm going to go left two, up a fourth. You could. It might be. So I'm going to keep going what I started with. Negative 1, 1 half. So left 1, up a half. I'll talk about your idea. I like it. 0, 1. Left, right, 0, up 1. 1, 2. Right, 1, up 2. 2, 4. Right, 2, up 4. Now, I'd already started putting my first dot on here. So that's why I didn't, okay? We have to take each of these dots and move them four right, which means you are adding four onto, not your y, your x. So what was two four, if I move that four right, is now going to be six four. What was 1, 2, if you add 4 there, is going to be 5, 2. What was 0, 1, is going to be 4, 1. What was negative 1, 1 half, is 3, 1 half. And what was negative 2, 1 fourth is positive 2, 1 fourth. Okay, so a couple of guys over there suggested, they said, okay, we're just going to take those dots, add 4 to that x value to begin with, and then not even graph the original dots. That's doable, okay? Here's what I'm going to mention, though. Let me graph this. If, I'll give you guys a moment to graph it so then you can be looking. Okay, if we had just taken negative 2 through positive 2 and plugged them into the whole equation to begin with, the problem I would have run into is I would have had 
four dots or five dots that were all between zero and one. They all would have been right there along the x-axis. And do you really get a picture of what the graph looks like then? No. And so that's why, especially when you have a left or right shift, you have to do the plug them in without using that part. Okay, so as I said, that's why I'm teaching stretch and shrink, sure. Reflection, sure. We can go ahead and plug the x values into that. But when it comes to the moving, let's do the moving afterwards. Okay? Questions on this one? Okay. Um, we could do this D. However, E on the next page is also very similar. And that's the one I'm choosing to do. B and D? B is a lot like A. D is a lot like E we're getting ready to do. With B, could you just like make that to a fraction that point five? You could. Like it's just like A. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you'll notice, first of all, there's two D's, whatever. Um, this D right here is a lot like the C that we just did. Okay, yeah, it's not too bad. It's just moving it left, too. The one we're going to focus on right now is E, which looks bad like the one that I skipped, right? This one is a little bit bad just because of the fact that it's not actually a fraction, but it's that fraction of the decimal. Exactly. The fraction decimal, they're all the same. Okay, so E. The one labeled E. Can you identify some pieces happening here? Let me rephrase that question. What pieces can you identify so that are happening here? Five. Okay, what's a plus five doing? Okay, so my graph is going to have to move up five. What else can you identify? That five. What about that five? Oh, it's called the, it's like it's both one, so it's like either stretch or shrink, so it's like it's a stretch. Yep. It's, not, it's not like it goes to zero or one, right? Okay, so stretch at five. We're also moving this equation up five, or this graph up five. And then that 0.25 to the x is just your base function here. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to write down the pieces we just said, the fact that there's a vertical stretch by a factor of 5, and that we're going to translate this up 5, and then we're going to get to work on it. I just write the stretch of 5. I'm just going to test, I'll forget it. Let me finish writing mine. Vertical, vertical stretch by a factor of five translated up five units. Okay, so in all honesty, if I'm grading a test, I'm going to look for in that first when it says vertical stretch by a factor of five, I will be specifically looking for the word stretch and the number five. Right, because I was like, yes. what you, what Vertical you, is good, though, because we haven't really talked about it, but there is such thing as a horizontal stretch. Okay, we haven't talked about it. There, it, there is such thing, which is why you will constantly hear me saying vertical stretch. By a factor of five is just proper form, good grammar. As I said, bare minimum, I'm looking for, can you tell me it's a stretch of five? That's bare minimum. It's not ideal, but I take it at this point. Does that answer the question? Kind of like translate up five. I like to see the word translated, but I've got to see up five. Depends. Sometimes I need to see some kind of verb there. Translated, moved, shift. Okay. What? Haley will bring that one up to me next period. So, yep. Okay. Okay. So, with that in mind, if you think about this one the way I've been doing the others, okay, I'm going to plug values into the main part of this, right? 
before we do any moving left, right, up, down. So for me, my recommendation is you plug your values into the 5 times 0.25 times f to the x. And then move your points up 5. Although if you want to be honest, in this one you could plug the x values in just fine as is and get the values to go. Okay, the difference is because we're not moving left or right. Um, same old question. What are good x values? Uh, negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2. Okay. And the y values, when I'm plugging in, I'm going to do 5 times 0.25 raised to the x. Now, let me ask you, what is 0 0.25? 0 0.25 is 1 fourth. So one you can fourth. also think of this as 5 times 1 fourth to the x, yes? Yeah. Okay. So technically, you can do this with a calculator. You can do this with your brain. What's the first number I'm plugging in? Negative 2. So let's review. How do I deal with a negative exponent on a fraction? You have to make it positive. And to make that exponent positive, we're going it. to flip. Flip, it. flip it. So what is 1 over 4 when you flip it? 4 over 1, which is 4. So now I have 5 times 4 squared. 4 squared is 16. 5 times 16? 86. 80. 8. Now, those of you that plugged this into your calculator, did you get the same thing? I don't know if anyone's plugging it into their calculator, but in third hour they were. So, should have got the same thing. Okay, let's try it with negative 1. So, you try with negative 1, what's the negative tell me to do? Flip it. And so now it's 4 to the first. What's 4 to the first? 4. 4. And what's 5 times 4? 20, 20, 20. 20. 20. Okay, I'm going to do the next one in my head. 0.25 raised to the power of 0. 1. And then 1 times 5 is... Five. Okay. Five times yeah. one fourth to the first. So we're in the positives now. One fourth to the first is just one fourth. How do you make five a fraction? You put a one underneath it. So five over one times one over four. Five over four. If you did this on the calculator. I got a decimal. What is 5 fourths as a decimal? 1.25. And then can we put in 2? Yes. What's 1 fourth squared? 1 fourth times 1 fourth. 4 times 4 makes it 1 16. 5 over 1 times 1 over 16? Five sixteenths. Xavier's going to give me the calculator answer. Point three one two five officially. Okay. It is, but okay. So the challenge here is what. We have to grab eighty, and that's even before we add our five. It is what it is. Okay, so needless to say, my graph is not set up for eighty. We haven't talked about it recently, but what do you do in a situation like this? We don't cry in the shower. We can. Okay, I don't want to put it up above that much, just because I also, besides, even if we forget that eighty. We still have to graph a 20, which is better, but not a whole lot better. So can we talk about scaling the graph? 
Scaling, what do I mean by scaling the graph? Yeah, counting by something other than ones. Okay, so I actually was going to count by fives. Okay, now when I count by fives, it's a really small graph. It's going to be hard for me to label, so I'm going to label every other one. Because here's the deal, you can't scale a graph and not label it. You can't scale a graph and say, oh yeah, I scaled that graph, but then not ever put your labels on there. Okay, it just doesn't make sense. So, and I know I don't have to go all the way over, so like, I'm going to come over in this area. So if my first line's 5, my second line's 10. 15, I'm going to label 20. 25, 30. 35, 40. 45, 50. 65, whoops, 55, 60. There's 65, 70, 75, 80. It makes my top line 80. We're going to go with good enough. Technically, we still have to go up from there, but... Now, as we go to graph this, so if you graph the original dots as is, negative 280 means I'm going to go left 2, up 80. Negative 120, left 1, up to my 20 line. 0, 5, where is 5? The first line, what looks like 1, right? 1, 1 1.25, so right 1, up just a little. 2.3125, right 2, up a little. Officially, though, what have I not done yet? Uh, you haven't done the... We need to take those dots and... Up five? <laughs> Whatever this problem was. Now, what does moving up five in this graph mean? Oh, shoot. We did five times five, so... Wait a five units is how many lines? Three. One line. Each line is worth five. So if I'm moving it up five, each of those dots I just did has to move up. 20. Just one line. So my one that was at 80 is now going to be just one line up. Each of these dots goes one line up. Now, listen up, children, behave, <laughs> question here, in a normal graph, we're not allowed to cross the x-axis, what line am I not allowed to cross here? The five line? Yeah, the the first five. line? I get what you mean. So officially, it's the line y equals five, uh -huh. which is that first that first line up. That's the line we're not allowed to cross, because normally it's the x-axis. You take that whole graph and move it up five units, it can no longer cross instead of zero, it can no longer cross five. Okay. Okay, so something good to realize there. Questions on those? You realize Math Excel, there's going to be multiple choice where you have to pick the right graph. Think about it, though. Some of them they make, I almost hate to say, too easy. If they give you a parabola, a U-shape, in your homework, Don't it. <laughs> is that what our graphs look like today? No. no. Okay, so beware. Look for graphs that look like the correct shape. Okay. Now, we have one last thing to do. And that is another interest formula. We talked some yesterday about compound interest. The one we're talking about today, please listen, is continuously compounded interest. And if you notice, we have a special formula. So when you have a problem that specifically says continuously compounded interest, you have to use this special formula. Special formula, A of T equals P times ER to the T, or E to the RT. 
Now, P is still our principal. Do you guys remember what principal is? Okay, it's your initial value. It's your starting amount. Okay. R is still your interest rate, which means it's the percent, but we're going to express it in decimal form. Okay. T is still, guys, time. And A of T is the amount at time T. Now, the part that's new to you guys, that E. Okay, that E is a mathematical number. Like we know pi is 3.14. E is a mathematical number. It's 2.718, so on and so forth. Okay, E is a button on your calculator. And you will have to have that to do this homework. So, if you would please, focus with me and let's look at example two here. Suppose you won a contest at the start of fifth grade that deposited $3,000 in an account that pays 5% annual interest compounded continuously. How much will you have in the account when you enter high school four years later? So compounded continuously tells me I'm using what formula? A of T equals P times E to the RT. So, if you would, Identify important pieces in this equation for me. Okay, the principal, the amount you're starting with, is 3,000. Would have been our initial value yesterday, our A value, right? Okay, what else do we know? Okay, 5% is my interest rate. What form will I use of 5%? Move it to left and it's 0 0.05. What else? Okay. How much will you have in the account when you enter high school? Four years later. So T is four. So fill in your equation. It says A of T. So that means we're trying to find A of four, the amount four years later. For P, my principal, I'm going to fill in 3,000. E stays E, it's a number, it's a button on your calculator, raised to the R, which is 0 0.05, times T, which is 4. Okay. My calculator, I can type it in just like this. Not all calculators can do that. One thing, let's go ahead and clean up. Can you clean up that exponent for me? What is 0 0.05 times 4? So this is 3,000 times e to the point 2. Grab the calculator you're usually using. If that's one of mine, feel free to grab one of mine. Because you've got to know how to use the e button. On my calculator, my e is a second function. So it's often a second function. And it's right above my LN button right here on the left. So for me, it's third button down the left. It's the second function. So I can do 3,000 times and mine second E raised to the point 2. And I can do mine just like that and get an answer. Now, you need to figure out in your calculator how your calculator works or if you're using one of mine, whatever, but you need to figure out how to use that. Because in homework, you have something in homework as easy as find e to the fifth. What's find e to the fifth mean? You have to take a calculator and type in e, put a power of five, and hit equals. Okay? Now, if you can't figure out how to use the calculator that's in your hand, let me know. Because... It's there somewhere. It's just a matter of figuring it out. Now, before I walk away real quick, what's the answer I should write down? Because this answer is moolah. Moolah. There we go. 
So $3,664.21. Okay. Um, feel free to go ahead and try part B. Yeah, okay. So yours is right there. Yeah, oh, I didn't know what this is. So let's see. 3,000. Let me first second. Second. E. Oh, okay. So, okay. Oh, did you press that one or that one? I did that one. Okay. So you, you plan to use your power first. So point two. And then we're going to do okay. second E. So that's what E to the point two is. And then we're going to do times 3,000. So you'll have to do yours a little backwards. And that gives you the right answer. Okay? Oh. On some calculators, the calculators work a little backwards, and you have to enter your exponent, so like 0.2, and then you do e to whatever power. You get that, and then you have to multiply by 3,000. Okay, again, it varies from cap. This is why I said you need to practice with whatever calculator you're using. So you're doing point 0.2. Oh, point 0.2. Okay. Start with your exponent. Yeah, well, and then enter your E part. And then get that answer in times by 3,000. Here's the deal, guys. Can you get my answer? Um, what was different on part B? So four more years means I would be doing what? T is 8. Yeah. So you're doing A of 8 is 3,000 E to the 0 .05 times 8. If you do this correctly, $4,475.47. Okay. Homework is due tomorrow. I did finish the notes. So, lesson 7-2, Math Excel. Finish it for tomorrow. Please. Be careful.